everybody now had to not even the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, let there be a much to move tonight. Let there be a much to move tonight. Let there be a much to move tonight. Let there be a signs and wonders. Let there be miracles tonight. Let there be a deep breath. Let there be a turn around. Give us back tonight. In the much to move of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let that be a manifestation in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Genesis 1 says, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the water, and God spoke, and there was light. So now, let the word of God be spoken tonight. Let the power of the Holy Ghost move, and let that be manifestation. Let that be light, illumination in the hearts and minds of people tonight. In the minds of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let that be a let be light. Let there be light. Let there be growth. Let there be increase by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Let there be a move of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let there be a manifestation Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be testimony. Amen. Let there be testimony tonight. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We bless you, Jesus. Amen. We give you praise. We give you glory. Amen. Amen. Let that be your holy name. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Our Father, our God, we thank you for tonight. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We give you praise. In thank you. Lord, your name. We thank you thank for you tonight. Lord. Thank you, Father. We come to the rest of the Bible study unto you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Have your way. Thank you, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Thank you, Lord. Let your will be done. Be that glorified. You thank you, Lord. All the glory. All thank the praise. you, Lord. Let the man be glorified. Thank Let you only be glorified. Let you only be glorified. We pray for you increase in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank Let there be your holy name Thank you, Lord. in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good evening, church. Uh, Amen. The general Basia who supposed to lead us tonight asked me to stand up for him because um, he has some engagement, but he will be joining us later today. So thank you, uh, my elder David, for this beautiful prayer. Uh, today we are going to continue on our study of uh, the book of Hebrew, chapter 10. Um, and we thank uh, Pastor Pa, who started us off on the importance of um, this particular chapter of uh, Hebrew in, in which he made us to understand the supremacy of um, Jesus Christ as uh, different from all the other prophets that have come before that um, he, he came not as a prophet but as a mediator to save humanity in the second redemption plan of uh, God and uh, he made us to understand the inadequacy of the old uh, priesthood and the, the tabernacle which uh, we had already treated the, about the structure the meaning of the structure so um we are going to quickly review this verses 1 to 18 tonight so that we can be, before we can now progress to the next stage of uh, the author's um, argument so in this, I want us to just open our Bible to Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verses, I'm going to start from verses 1 to 18, then, then we can just, you know, start treating them, treating them as a review of what Pastor Paul has already taught us. So the, it said the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never be by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year make perfect those who draw near to worship he said otherwise would they not have stopped being offered for the worshippers will have been cleansed once for all and will no longer have felt guilty for their sins but those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins and it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepare for me with burnt offerings and sins offering you were not pleased. Then I said, Here I am. It is written, 
about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, my God. First, he says, sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire. Nor were you pleased with them, though they were offered in accordance with the law. Then he said, here I am. I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifices of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sin, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. 14. For by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First, he says in 16, this is the covenant I will make with them. After that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will never remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, sacrifices for sin is no longer necessary. So what was the, what was the Bible trying to tell us as, as we have been told? He said in the book of Hebrew, we, the author is showing Christ's superiority over the entire system of religion as embodied by the Jewish priesthood and sacrificial rituals in the Old Testament. And in this final section of the first part of the book, he revealed the necessity of Jesus' sacrifice and its effectiveness in comparison to the sacrificial death of animals in the Old Testament. Before the author argued that Jesus was a greater high priest than Aaron, because of his qualifications, God's son being a God, the son of God, the place where he ministered, he ministered in heaven, not in the tent made by man. And the type of sacrifice he offered, he, that he offered himself, not booze, not goods. Now, he will close his case by demonstrating that the result of Jesus' ministry on behalf of the people was also superior than the results of the Jewish high priest ministry for the Jewish people. And this is the climax of, the, of this letter. If the results are better, it is proof that everything else is true. So we have been going, we have been following this argument of uh, uh, Jesus Christ's superiority when, when, when uh, the Pasamana first told us about the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Jesus Christ priesthood is uh, of the order of Melchizedek and not the Leviticus uh, uh, order which, which uh, God uh, 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 asked uh, Moses to, to consecrate Aaron and his children and, and Aaron became the, the, the high priest according to the order of Aaron, according to the order of the Leviticus uh, uh, order. But in the, in the case of Jesus Christ, he said it is in the order of Melchizedek. And we, we were told again that Melchizedek had a kingdom, Salem, and he was also a priest and, and it, was all, it, it was more, it was a priest and also a king, and which Aaron was not, Aaron was not a king. So, so that's so that, so that the, we have been following this or this uh, argument all along. And today now in this verses 1 to 4 of, of uh, chapter 10, it says it's the result of the Jewish high priest work. You see, it's, it, the, the chapter 1 said, it said, for the law, since it has only a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very form of things, can never by the same sacrifice year by year, which they offer continually, make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise, would they not have ceased to be offered? Because the worshippers, having once been cleansed, 
who no longer have had consciousness of sin. So what we saw is, is that every year they come because every year they feel that they have not been properly cleansed. So he begins by arguing that if the sacrifices offered in the Old Testament worked, they will have cleansed the, 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 the consciences, the priests who offered them by authority and command of the law. You see, the proof of this would be that the people will have stopped offering them since they will no longer feel guilty and will be confident of salvation. But the author argues that the shadow, that is the outline, the rough sketch, can never be greater than the finished work or the form. And that the Old Testament sacrifices were just the shadow, but not the real thing. A million shadows cannot equal one real thing. So the Old Testament sacrifices were merely the shadow of the sacrifices of Christ, the real thing. He told them this, even though they were very, very educated and knowledge in the Mosaic law, just like we are knowledge too in the Bible, but it's very, very difficult for them to believe. So he has to make further argument for Christ. And then he went on in verse 3. He said, but in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins year by year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. Now what we have here, he said the author repeats the idea that the sacrifices in the Old Testament we are to serve as a, rem a reminder, a remembrance of sin, not as the actual offering for sin. And that was to come later in comparison to the sacrificial rituals of the Old Testament. We note that the ritual of the Lord's Supper is a remembrance of the sacrifice that does take away sin, not the sin itself. And you will all know the Last Supper. When Jesus Christ was about to be crucified, and that was the Last Supper he had with them. He said, do this in remembrance of me. But in fact, he says, the blood, which is the life of animals, could not remove sins no matter how many we are sacrificed and explain why this was so in the next verse so he explained in verse 4 why this cannot be permanent uh, uh, atonement for sin and that brings us to verses 5 to 10 he said god had always known that animal sacrifices could not remove sin but now the author answers why Jesus' sacrifice does. Therefore, in verse 5, he said, Therefore, when he comes into the world, that is verse 5, when he comes into the world, he says, Sacrifice an offering thou hast not desired, but a body that has prepared for me, in whole burnt offering and sacrifice for sin thou hast taken no pleasure then i said behold i have come in the role of the book it is written of me to do thy will O god now the author explains this by using psalm 40 verses 6 to 8 which in the original context as it was written by david sees David expressing a pledge to do God's will rather than offering former sacrifices. David understood that the essential truth about spiritual life, that obedience to God's will, as he had learned it from the scriptures, was what God wanted and what sustained man's soul, not animal sacrifices, or any sort of ritual for that matter. I want to take that again. David understood that the essential truth about spiritual life is obedience to God. To do God's will. We can be making 10,000 10, sacrifices. If you remember, King Solomon was very, very close to God. God even adopted him as his son. 
he knew how to, to, to he was so generous in making sacrifices to god but he was not obedient to god and the same thing with king Saul too. so so which means that for any one of us to grow spiritually we must have to learn obedience to god we must learn to have obedience to God and that's God's will as he has learned it from the scriptures and then secondly what God wanted and what sustained man's soul what God wanted and what sustained man's soul not animal sacrifices because if you remember uh, uh, Professor Samuel took uh, he said he said obedience is better than sacrifice so after saying above sacrifices and offering and who burnt offering and sacrifices for sin thou hast not desired nor hast thou taken pleasure in them which are offered according to the law verse 9 then he said behold i have come to do thy will he takes away the first in order to establish the second and by this will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of christ once and for all now if you remember pastor Paul told us last week that we have to be obedient we have to do god's will otherwise we'll be crucifying jesus christ twice again and w w because people don't understand it doesn't mean that you are taking jesus christ to to, to god cut out to go and crucify him again but we can crucify him again through our disobedience because he paid we, we, our body has been bought at a price and it's a very high price which is the sacred blood of jesus and so the author now takes the, this quote and this idea and applies them to jesus and his sacrifice what makes jesus sacrifice effective is that it involves the will of god in verse 9 he says that jesus was willing to offer himself the point here is that animals have no choice or will therefore their value as sacrifice is basically their earthly value as animals because if you remember when god told abraham to sacrifice his son isaac isaac asked his father when they were halfway to the mountain he said father we have the sticks we have everything here what about the animals and Abraham told him, God will provide. And when Adam was, uh, Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac, an angel of the Lord told him, stop. That it was a test for him. And then he said, look, look, he saw an animal, a lamb. So, so which means that animal, they have no choice at all. So he goes on, on to say in verse 10 that it was God's will that a perfect sacrifice be offered and in doing so jesus was doing god's will because if you remember again jesus christ said that nobody nobody forced me say I, I i i i i gave up my life i can take it back nobody takes it from me so in other words he, he was the one that really sacrificed himself to be the sacrificial lamb so that all of us can be redeemed from our iniquity and that iniquity was the sin of Adam and Eve. And that was what the, the psalmist also said, that iniquity my mother conceived in me. So that the point here is, is that animals have no choice at all. Therefore, their value as sacrifice is basically their earthly value as animals. But he goes on to say in verse 10 that it was God's will that a perfect sacrifice be offered and in doing so jesus was doing god's will what gives life and obtains forgiveness is the doing of god's will the offering of jesus life would have accomplished nothing had it not been in accordance with god's will jesus knew god's will is what was needed to remove the guilt as a result of man's sin and did it in so doing man's sins were removed forever and once god's will had been accomplished in this regard there's no need to repeat it 
it is done once for all, for all time. Now, even if a mere human being knew that this was God's will, he could not accomplish it because he lacked the perfect will or the perfect life and divine nature required. On the other hand, Jesus, the divine Son of God, given a human body, knowing God's will and living a sinless life was willing and more importantly able to do it. Are you following me? So, so, so that what the, so that what the, the, what the author is trying to tell them is that the, the, Jesus Christ sacrificed himself, but it is not the sacrifice alone that really matters, but the personality of that the sacrifice. Because one thing is Jesus Christ came 100% a human being, but he was completely different from us because he did not sin. But he has to come as a human being so, so, that, so that he could have all the feelings. He, he went, he, he went hunger, he went thirsty, he went homeless. He was not riding jets like we have today. He was also mixing with sinners. So, so he knew our problem. But despite the fact that that is the Son of God, he displayed the most humility in life. He displayed servant, servant leadership, he displayed everything. And he fulfilled all the prophecies that were written about him. And this was all the things that the author of the Hebrew was trying to, to sell to these people. And I know it's, it's difficult for them, as it is difficult for us today too. But fortunately for us, we were not brought up under the Mosaic law. We were brought up under the New Testament, so it was easy for us to follow. It was easy for us to believe. It was easy for us to understand. It was easy for us to follow Him. But it was difficult for them because everything was new, was new to them. It, so, so, so it was like, 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 like uh, taking them from, from the old tra and, and tradition die hard. So you, you, you have to understand the, 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 the situation in which they were. We were in a different, a different dispensation. We are in a different situation today. Because if they say we have been brought up under Mosaic law or under, under any other law, like um, Islamic law, um, Buddhist law, it will be difficult, just like them also, to buy into this new doctrine of Jesus Christ. So that, so that was why it took him time to take it step by step, step by step. Because one thing is, they were the one brought up under the Levitical order, under the priesthood, under the, 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 the ritual, the, the, the ceremonial uh, ritual of the, of the, 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 uh, of the, the, the tabernacle, in which we have the holies of holies, separated by a veil, and then we have the holy, and then we have another chamber for the Gentiles. So that, so that, so that everything was in stages, everything was in stages. And the high priest is the only medium between God and man. Just like like Moses was the was the middleman between the children of Israel on the Mount of Sinai, he was the only one that could speak to God, and he was the only mediator. He was the only me, the, the medium between between God and man, and the and the children of Israel. So the, and they were used to that kind of a uh, 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 ritual brought up, which which was difficult for for. For, for him now to take them away and that was why Jesus Christ said that uh, it would be very very difficult to put a new wine into an old skin otherwise it will burst it so it's, it's, it's not possible definitely to compromise the New Testament with the Old Testament and that was why Jesus Christ came to complement the law not to, to destroy it but to complement it, to, to, to open their eyes, to open their ways that, that they could now buy into the new uh, uh, dispensation. So that in that verse 11 to 18, which is the final summary of Christ's superiority. You see, the author makes a final comparison of the two kinds of priests, the Levitical priest and Jesus as priest in verse 11 he said and every priest stands daily ministering 
and offering time and time the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. As it was explained to us by our general Basia the other day, he said, was there any seat in the holies of holies? They said there was no seat there. And they said, why? Simply because there was no time for them to sit. Because they, they, they are making, they, they, they are making uh, um, intervention for, 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 for men like, like let, let's say they, they have almost about 500, 500 households, all of them bringing their own bulls, their goats and everything. And they have to slaughter all these goats and sprinkle the blood on the altar. So can you now imagine the, the priest now slaughtering almost about 20, just 20 goats a day. How much more? 500 goats. So, so which means that there was no time for them to, to, to even sit down at all or to eat. So, so, so it was one, one goat after another. So you cannot imagine how messy it would have been. So there was no, there, there was, the, even the high priest could not even sit down at all. And then also we were, we were told that the, the, the high priest even could not even go to the, the, the holies of holies twice or three times as he likes. No, he has to go one, once a year. And when he was even going there, they have to tie something on his waist so that he, just in case he does not come out again, they, they will pull the string to, dra to drag him out. Because he could have got burnt over there, could have been caught stricken by God. So, 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 that, so that there was that ill, there was that fear of God, that, that the Holy Spirit, and, and, and according to what uh, uh, Ricardo told us the other day, what we are those in the, in the Holy of Holies? That is the Ark of the Covenant, which contains, if you still remember, the, 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 the two tablets of the Holy of the, the Testament, the, 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 the Ten uh, Commandments, and then Aaron's board, and then manna, the, the example of the manna that, that served as a reminder for them, that God is sufficient for them. When, when they were hungered in the wilderness, they thought, they, they started come grumbling to Moses that he brought them to the wilderness to die. He cried to God, God sent down manna and even gave them order that don't ju just take enough for, your, for, 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 for a day. But some of them were still stubborn. They will still say, ah, suppose it does not come tomorrow. And, and, and can you really blame them? Are we not the same thing like them? Which means they lack faith. And, and that was exactly what we witnessed during this, this pandemic when they said there's got to be lockdown. People bought, bought the whole water out of the uh, supermarket. The, I, I, mean, I saw a woman buying olive oil. He bought almost about 24 bottles of olive oil. What for? Some people are buying souls, some people are, they, they, it's so ridiculous. And that is who we are as human beings, faithless generations. So, so, so that, that's what is happening. So that, so that, and then, so that he says that the Old Testament priests still serving in the capacity at the time that the author wrote this letter, continue with his daily task of sacrificial offering and all for no result other than to remind one of sin and since sin was ever present the work was never ending so in other words it doesn't mean that when you bring 20 goats today for this year you are you are cleansed for the whole of the year for next year again you are still coming back with your family so that it was an a never ending exercise never ending exercise and at the time the author was writing this this uh, uh, letter to the to the jews in rome the the levitical order was still in force so the, the sacrifices were still in force so that so that so that so that they were still doing it so that and they really believed in it but when persecution came now from the from the roman empire majority of them wanted to go back to go back following to be to, to go back in, under the, the slavery of the law and then, so so that he took the author a great task for them to say no 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 don't go back again because you have been saved don't go back don't put yourself don't take the yoke again you have already been saved but they say but we, how can we be saved 
And this was the argument he was telling them even in verse 12. He said, But he, having offered one sacrifice for sin for all time, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time onward until his enemies be made a footstool for his feet. For by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. Jesus as high priest, however, offers his perfect sacrifice according to God's will in heaven. And only once, he then sits down at the right hand of God never to offer the sacrifices again. His work is done. And he sits at a place of exaltation, power, and authority. Unlike the Jewish priest whose work is never finished and accomplishes nothing in regards to salvation. Jesus has accomplished the purification of all men's souls, thereby freeing them from guilt and condemnation. There's no need for any more sacrifices. His blessing has accomplished God's will. Now, let us note something here. In Matthew 27, 50 to 51, we are Jesus on the cross as breath his last will with the words it is finished and that was what our general Basia taught us when he was doing one of his sermon the meaning of it is finished the task has been accomplished matthew recalls that at that moment the veil and we are still coming back to that the veil in the temple separating the holy place from the holies of holy was torn into two which is very very significant indeed you see because one thing it, it's uh, for that veil to tear into two it, it should it, it, it should have been a, 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 a great concern it should have been a, a great a, a, a great uh, a, a concern for worry especially for Caiaphas, for, 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 for Ananias and, and uh, all, all the high priests that what? When Jesus Christ breathed the last breath, the last breath of life, the veil tia, just turned to two straight away, exposing the holies of holies which has never been before. And this, was, this, this is the reason why these people should be afraid. They should, they should, they say, what? This has never, but, but they are, I, I can't understand it, but their heart was so stubborn that they could not even understand the significance of it. And this, uh, and this signifies, among other things, that the need for sacrifice to approach God was over. The way to enter was now clear, and that way was through faith in Jesus Christ. The author makes a final appeal to the Old Testament saying that this is what God promised all along. This is what he wanted. And the nature and result of Jesus' sacrifice shows that all this was in accordance to the scriptures. In verse 15, And the Holy Spirit also bear witness to us. For after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws upon their heart and upon their mind. I will write them. He then says, and their sins and their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. Now, the question we are now asking ourselves tonight is, is that Jesus Christ said, I will put my laws upon their heart and upon their mind and write them and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now, when Pontius Pilate was won by his wife, do not have hand in the death of this holy man, Pontius Pilate had a choice. His job as authority, as a council of Rome, or to spare Jesus' life. And after, if, if he has spared Jesus' life, he will offend Caesar because he will be reported to Caesar. He will lose his job. 
So he opted to save his own soul, to save his career, to save his authority, to save his, his uh, 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 um, uh, 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 um, the, the glamour of office to sacrifice Jesus Christ, even though he had to do that one so that the scriptures might be fulfilled, that Jesus Christ was handed over to the Gentiles to be crucified. Now, something happened. He realized that he made a mistake. He realized that he has sinned. He washed his hand. He said, I've washed my hand from the blood of an innocent man. And then they said, let their sins, let his, let, let, let his sin be upon us and our grandchildren and children and children and children, and children. The question I want to ask now is that when Jesus Christ said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. And they put a curse upon themselves that let the sin be upon us. And they did not repent. Why was it that they suffered a lot after 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 Jesus Christ left? That that uh, was it because what is the basic of forgiveness? What is the basic of, of total forgiveness? Because even though we, we, we are we are told and we understand and we believe that Jesus Christ has died for us and that his blood has cleansed us but why do we still suffer can anybody answer me why did the children of the jews really suffer despite the fact that jesus christ said forgive them for they know not what they are doing but we said that and their sins and their lawless deeds i will remember no more but did god really remember forgive them but why did they have to suffer? Especially during, during 1940, 1940, they almost about 2.5 million Jews who were, 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 were sent to the gas chambers. They all died. They all suffered their lot. So what, what are the reasons why Christians still suffer today? Can somebody help us? Pastor Pa? Yeah, why is it that people suffer today despite the fact that the blood of Jesus has cleansed us and, and the salvation is free? Is, it, is, is salvation totally free? Why is it that Christians still suffer? Not because there are so many kinds of uh, trials, trial suffering. So that it's not every, 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 every suffering is sin. Alright? But what, what are the sin? What, what really constitutes sin that, that make people to suffer? Why is it that salvation is not is not is not free at that stage? Amen. Thank you, sir. So, to throw small light out, you know, when you say people suffer, you no, know, I don't know from what perspective, but I say the same way I suffer, they persecuted me, they will persecute you. Okay. Suffering doesn't really mean, I don't know in what respect he was really talk, speaking about. But suffering doesn't mean that you, you are caused or you have a problem or there's no, you know, so we got to, we got to understand why it is because the scripture says that Jesus said it, he said the same way that I suffer, you yes, go through persecution, you mm -hmm. go through pain, you go through all this, but through it all, you must have faith because I am with you even until the end. So Christians, we should not think that the, the, the Christianity is going to be bread and butter because mm -hmm. our master went through pain, we should expect it. But the one thing that is certain, okay, as long as we hold on to our faith, as long as we believe in our master, that he's coming again and live a life worthy of him, we are sure that when the trumpet sound, we will be in glory mm -hmm. and our suffering, our pains will be over. Christians, you know, we should not focus on the point that we, because why is it that people in the world, they will think they enjoy and we are suffering, we are not suffering. Okay, there is peace in our heart. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have to go through trials, we have to go through temptations. But all that we have to do as a Christian, as Lambert 
is that we should hold up, we should stand firm. They are, the, 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 the devil is going to bring some things, stumbling block along our way. But let us continue to hold on to Christ. Let's hold on to our faith. That's okay, right. so when you are talking about suffering, that's the one I want to touch. That's right. You see, suffering doesn't mean that because Christ told us. That's Already right. we know it in the scripture. He went through pain. He went through persecution. He said we will go through the same thing. But our, our what, what assure us, he said he will be with us. So in the midst of suffering, in the midst of pain, in the midst of frustration, in the midst of tears, we believe as a Christian, as long as we want to Christ, He is with us, even until the end of the age. So that's my perspective. I want to uh, yeah, can you, on that. Yeah, the, the last time you, the last time, yeah. Mean that you, you're not going to go through pains and persecution. That's right. It is assured that we have to go through it, but God, Christ is with us. God bless you. Th thank you. The last time you taught us, you said that there are certain things that Christians uh, can do to crucify Jesus Christ again. Can you please, right. can you please uh, enlighten us? Well, how can a Christian believer crucify Jesus Christ again? Oh, Christ came to die on the cross. Yes, sir. For our sin. Mm -hmm. okay? For the sin of the world. That's right. That's why he came to die to take away that sin. So as a believer, once we accept Christ, that means that sin, Christ died, it has been taken away. When you go back to it, that means you are sending Christ back on the cross, not a physical cross per se, but you know what, you are crucifying again because you are bringing back the sin that he took away with his life and his blood. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's what I mean when, when you, when you go back to sin as a Christian, you are putting Christ back on the cross. Is that what Apostle Paul meant by, by that your, your, your body was bought at the price? Uh, keep, right. it, keep it holy. Uh, thank you, Pastor Paul. Amen. Thank you. So in verses 15 to 17, it's a, it's a quote from Jeremiah. 31 verses uh, from verses 33. He said, We are the prophet is revealing what the ultimate end of God's work among his people will be. He said, They will have a new covenant, better promise. They will have an intimate knowledge of him and his will. In other words, they will be able to know God subjectively and not only objectively they will be able to know God subjectively. And that is the difference between us and the children of Israel when they came out of Mount Sinai. Now, or when they came out of Egypt, rather. Now, when they came out of Egypt, when they were at, the, at Mount Sinai, and, and they saw, uh, Moses went to the, the top of the, to the, to, to the top of the mountain to go and collect the Ten Commandments. After, after staying for so long, for 40 days, 40 nights, without food, without water, they assume completely that he's dead. And, and we can't blame them too, because all of us will assume too, because how can anybody survive 40 days? Some of the prophets, our, our, our African prophets, that, that they, uh, say, okay, they, they, they are going to fast for 40 days. That 40 days, 40 nights, it made them inside their grave. So, so, so that it was impossible and then but because they were the the, the, the concept of about God is, is subjectively we have to see him they didn't believe in the in the concept of of, of, of unseen God they have to see him because they have been in, in, in Egypt in, uh, under the influence of uh, multiplicity of gods and they have so many more than more than one thousand gods in Egypt: God of uh, the Nile, God of the Sun, God of the Moon, God of the Locusts, God of the Field, and and all these gods were represented by different, different, different objects, like we have in Africa too. 
we have the god of iron we have the god of war we have the god of uh, satan we have the god of uh, fertility we have the god like the athenians do the song god the song god every uh, and even the song god is still being worshipped in the roman catholic religion today because that that big thing they they, they carry is 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 uh, is not christian it's a modification of of the of of of, um, of, of nimrod the song god that they, they adopted so so that so that they can drift or they can draft the the, the, the genders into christianity by by compromising christianity so so they they prevail upon aaron that give us a God, give us a God that we can see. We, we don't believe in the God we don't see. <laughs> so he asked them, okay, bring your gold. Bring your, because one thing is, I, I used to ask myself, I said, I said, I said, our God is so wonderful and he's so mysterious because God said that I will make them to spoil the Egyptians. Ask all the Egyptians to depart with their gold, earrings, and everything. And, and the Bible told us uh, after the Passover that, that these Egyptians they, they departed with their golds, with their trinkets, with their everything. So is God, uh, you know, does God know that they are going to use this gold to make a, a, a bull? <laughs> can, you, I mean, can you imagine? Because uh, those are the things that Aaron asked them bring, bring all those gold. And they donated, they donated, so they donated the whole, the whole place. So, so he made, he method them to make a a, 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 golden pool for them. And then they started worshiping it. So at that time, that they felt, they, they felt uh, 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 safe. They felt safe. You see, and, and and that was what Jesus Christ removed completely. That that we have not to worship God objectively, not subjectively, objectively. In other words, Apostle Paul was was, was in, in in Ephesus, and he, and he saw so many so many uh, 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 shrine, especially for some of us that have gone through the Roman Catholic something too. We have the shrine to Saint Thomas. We have the shrine to Saint Matthew. We have the uh, 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 shrine to Saint Albert Pa. We have this, you know, to, to uh, 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 you know, so so many, so many, so many, so many shrines there. Uh, but there was one there. Apostle Paul noticed it to an unknown god. So so they had said this is an unknown god. Nobody's worshiping Apostle Paul. This is the one I want to talk about. But I know that you people are religious people, but I want to talk about this one that is the unknown God. And that is the one we are worshipping today, the unknown God, that we worship in spirit and in truth. So, so that we don't need to see him physically. He's omnipresent, he's everywhere, he's omnipotent, he knows everything. And it is difficult again. For us to sell this because the Buddhists they have the, they have the Buddha, the Buddha images there. And 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 the Muslim they have the, the, the black star in, in, in Kaaba, where they go and kiss every year, every year, every every pilgrimage they go to and, to, and kiss the, 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 the stone of a uh, devil or something like that. You know, but we go to church and we believe that we are in, in presence of God. So so that so that it takes a lot of great faith. For us to be able to say, let me approach the throne of grace with confidence that whatever I ask the Father in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Father will do it for me. It takes a great faith. Even Apostle, Apostle Thomas doubted said, until I see the, 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 the until I see the, the, the nail wound on his on his on his on the two hands and then i see and i see the we are this the 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 uh, uh, stab him value of believer we must have faith that's right in whatever we are doing for god for example as mount zion about to construct our cathedral it takes faith it takes the body of believer to believe to, that God can provide no matter what. Trusting God will provide whatever is needed for the construction up to the finish. He said that's 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 the, 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 the faith that is very important for 
before the church. Amen. A group of believers believing that yes, God can do it, we can do it. That's true. Have that trust and belief in Christ. That is very, very important. That's true. And then as individual, we need to have faith as That's individual true. believer. You see, as we already know the definition of faith. That's true. Thank you, that sir. That definition alone. Mm-hmm. You know, this is where Christ, Christ, our Christianity is being tested. That's right. Thank because you. Because if you can, if your faith is shaking, you will not go further. No. And then you will begin to have doubt in your heart. That's right. As soon as doubt begins to kick in, the faith begins to well away. That's we true. should not have doubt. Let's believe. That's right. Even if we don't see it happening, but we believe that Christ is alive That's true. and He can do it. Amen. It's very important for Christianity, you know, because many times, you know, when we don't see things happening, we tend to lose our faith That's right. in Christ. Is this? For example, let's, let's look at the three Hebrew children. They say, even if we would die, but we are not going to serve your God. That's right. That was a strong faith. Mm-hmm. They didn't even, they, 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 they did not know that Christ was going to be with them in the fire. I know. And deliver them from the fire. That is true. On the fire. That is true. So let's have a strong faith. Believe in Christ. That's part of what is going on. That's part of what we are going through. But let's have faith in Christ that we will overcome. Is faith infectious? And as a body of believers. That's what I wanted to throw light on. Is faith infectious? Is faith faith infectious? Yes, sir. Okay. Can I? Yes, sir. I want to. I, I want to, to chip into it and also to tell us if faith is infectious. That is, if the leader has a faith, can can he infect the the team? Carry on, sir. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, um, faith, as uh, as man said earlier, you know, it can be. I mean, faith is borrowed. So, as a result, I can also say that. Um, can be infectious okay. because you see it and you will practice because when Christ when the disciples were with Jesus they saw the things that he did and but even though they were with him there are times when their faith was shaky I mean an example was uh, when the storm they were in the boat with him there was a huge storm and instead of them believing that they can calm the storm, they have to wake them up. Hmm. So he asked them, what's wrong with you? Where's your faith? But we see in many verses in the Bible where Jesus healed people simply because they have faith. You know, we, we know of the situation of the, the young girl that was there. But the, uh, the, 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 the man said, or the father said, um, you know, ask Christ to just lay his hand on her. Just lay your hands on her. He believed that the girl will rise up, mm-hmm. will, 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 will be, will be uh, saved, will be lifted up. So because of his faith, Christ said to him, the child is healed. And Christ revived him, or revived the girl. The sick woman, the woman with the issue of blood, mm. she had faith in Christ that if only I can stretch my hand and touch the hem of his gown, just the hem, That's right. I'll be healed. And this woman has had this condition for over 12 years. That is true. Faith. I mean, Let's take a look at the practical, the, the practical sense of it. We have children, I remember when my kids were young. I will hold them and throw them in the air. They will be laughing. 
Mm. Because they believe they have faith that I'll catch them. That's true. But <laughs> let a, a, someone out there, you know, in the street, if you don't know, hold them and just throw them in the air. No, they'll be crying, they'll be shouting. That is true. Because they don't have faith. So faith is all about trust. That's true. And believe in something that you, you don't even, you, you can't even see. But mm -hmm. yet you still believe. That's true. Okay. Yet you, you still believe. That's and true. I think faith is a really significant thing in the practice of our faith. That's right. Because we pray for things. We pray for healing. We pray for all these things. But if you don't have the faith, the belief, and the hope, it impacts the growth of your faith and That's the growth right. of your, your relationship with, with, with Christ. Because with faith now, you trust in Him that whatever you need, as when you come to the throne of grace, <laughs> there will be transformation. There Amen. will be healing. That's right. Thank you so much. So that's all I have to say. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, let us finish with this uh, last two verses, 15 to 17. It's a, it's a quote from Jeremiah, like I've read in Jeremiah 31. It's where the prophet is revealing what the ultimate end of God's work among his people will be. They will have a new covenant, which is a better promise than the old one. And they will have an intimate knowledge of him and his will. In other words, they be able to know God subjectively, as I've explained, and not objectively. And they will know Him personally and not just about Him. Their sins will be forgiven and forgotten, not just exposed before them year after year. And so we ask, will we remember our sin in heaven? According to Hebrew, it seems that if God does not remember them, we won't either. You see, now, in, in verse 18, he said, Now, where there is forgiveness of these things, there is no longer any offering for sin. Now, the author finishes by stating that once forgiveness has appeared, it means that the old is gone, and the promises spoken of by the prophets are now here. So, the summary of that 1 to 18 is that in the last section of the first part of this episode, the author brings home the point that Jesus' work as high priest is superior to that of Aaron and his descendants. One, he shows that the Old Testament sacrifices never accomplished the cleansing of the conscience from guilt, no matter how many were offered. Two, he demonstrates that Christ's sacrifice was effective to remove guilt because it was offered according to God's will. And three, he summarizes his own argument by comparing Jesus and the Levitical priest once last time. He does this by stating that they, the Jewish priests, have an endless task that does not achieve through sanctification. But Jesus as high priest offering himself as sacrifice accomplishes God's will, which was his own exhortation and our redemption. Now, the author's purpose was to compare the Levitical religious system and Jesus Christ to demonstrate Jesus' superiority as a person and as a minister for our spiritual needs. We had to learn a lot about the Jewish religion in order to make sure of what the author was saying as he compared it to. He will draw his final conclusion in the last few chapters which the next teacher is going to take us next Wednesday. You see, this episode demonstrates Christ's superiority, or one could correctly say fulfillment to the Jewish religion, which was the most developed religion system of the time, since it was given by God as a forerunner to Christianity. So, so the mosaic was a forerunner to Christianity. However, with the Bible as a whole, we can also demonstrate how Christ is superior to any religious system, past, present, or future. Of course, the author wasn't talking about systems. He was talking about Jesus Christ, 
the resurrected Son of God, who is the ruler of the universe and will judge all men and their religion. So please, my fellow brethren, do not be ashamed. Do not feel ashamed or afraid or embarrassed to claim that Christ is the only way to come to God. The author eloquently argued this case to the Jews 2000 years ago. But we can and must always make this case today to Muslims, to Buddhists, to Hindus and others who have not received what only Jesus Christ can give them and that is forgiveness of sin. No other religion offers this but all need it. So which means that the writing in the Bible or what Jesus Christ said, I am the way, I am the door and nobody comes to Father except through me is very, 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 very true. And some Christians still think of that, but by the way, all roads lead to Rome. So if I'm not a Christian, does it mean I cannot get to heaven? And those are the questions people are still asking today. But for all Christians, we will.